Xiaomi's successor to the Redmi 1S is here, boasting a faster 64-bit processor, larger battery, and an all-new design. Sure, Xiaomi is known for their high-quality Redmi phones, but does the Redmi 2 live up to the hype? This is my full review of the Xiaomi Redmi 2. To understand the significance of the Redmi 2, you must first take a look at its predecessor, the Redmi 1S. The Redmi 1S launched back in July of 2014 for an incredibly low price of $140. Now sure, we've seen cheaper smartphones like the Elephone G4 and THL t success flood the market in the past year, but we didn't see anything from such a popular smartphone maker. Unsurprisingly, the Redmi 1S was a huge success for Xiaomi. However, it did ship with Android 4.3 with MIUI 5, which still hasn't been updated by the way, was relatively hefty and had a nice but subtle design. Xiaomi has addressed most of these complaints with the Redmi 2, starting with the design. The Redmi 2 is available in black, white, green, yellow, and pink. Each model has a black faceplate with a matte, plastic rear cover. Although the phone renders make the device look like a miniature Redmi Note, the Redmi 2 feels very different in the hand, because of its matte finish. I prefer the matte finish over the glossy finish because of its soft feel and better resistance to both scratches and fingerprints. The only drawback here is that the phone can feel a little slippery in the hand, but it shouldn't be a major concern for many people since this phone is smaller and easier to manage. Xiaomi also has a small slot on the right side of the rear cover, making it much easier to remove than the Redmi Note's cover. The cover is curved near the sides, which makes the device nicer to hold and also easier to grip. The phone is on the thicker side at 9.4mm, but it does weigh in at just 133 grams. Overall, the phone looks very nice and premium, despite it being an affordable option. On the back, we have an 8 megapixel camera with flash below a secondary microphone. The rear speaker is on the left side of the camera, and the headphone jack is on the top right. The iconic Xiaomi logo is on the bottom, and the micro USB port is located on the bottom right, next to the primary microphone. The power and volume buttons are on the right side of the phone, and they both have nice tactile feedback. The power button can be easily pressed when holding the phone in just a single hand, and the volume rocker can be accessed fairly quickly with just a minor adjustment. Coming to the front of the device, you'll find a 2 megapixel front facing camera on the top left. The three capacitive buttons are on the bottom, but they unfortunately do not illuminate. This is kind of disappointing, but the Redmi 1S keys didn't illuminate either, so this didn't really come as much of a surprise. You may expect the leftmost button to be for menu, but MIUI 6 actually repurposed this button to open the recent app switcher. Although I wasn't very open to this change at first, I have gotten used to it. If you wish, you can always change the single press function back to menu in the settings. Xiaomi also included a notification LED just below the home button, and I think it looks very nice. You can change the color in the settings for each type of notification. The 4.7 inch IPS display on the Redmi 2 looks pretty good, with excellent viewing angles and good color reproduction. It is coated in Corning Gorilla Glass 2, so you shouldn't need to worry about scratching it. The display does seem a tad warm compared to other phones, especially the Redmi Note 4G. The brightness range is also pretty good, enabling use in almost all dark or bright environments. MIUI 6 actually has adaptive brightness, so you can keep it on auto brightness and also adjust the brightness manually. Call quality seemed about average when using Google Hangouts for VoIP calls. The earpiece was loud and callers said they heard little background noise. Please enter the wireless phone number that you are calling about, starting with the area code. For more options, press 1. I unfortunately wasn't able to test the phone using my AT&T SIM card because the model that I have is actually incompatible. There are three models of the Redmi 2 and each support different frequencies. The model that Panduil is selling is the China Unicom model, which supports GSM 900, 1800, WCDMA 900, 1900, 2100, FDD LTE bands 1 and 3, and finally TD LTE band 41. This model will not support AT&T nor T-Mobile in most areas of the United States. AT&T uses the 850 and 1900 bands, and T-Mobile uses the 1700 and 2100 bands. If you don't have all the bands that your carrier supports, you will have no service in areas where the other bands are used exclusively. Please keep in mind that there will be an international model coming soon, which will support up to HSPA Plus on AT&T. I'll leave links to both a list of 3G and 4G LTE networks by carrier below, so please check that out if you want to confirm compatibility. The rear speaker on the Redmi 2 sounds fairly loud and has decent audio quality. When setting the phone on a flat surface, it suffers from only minor distortion, thanks to a very subtle camera hump.
The 8 megapixel rear camera is actually reasonably good, although you shouldn't have high expectations. It mostly takes good images that are sharp and clear. It does record up to 1080p video, although the sample clip that I took was in the default 720p. It is running MIUI 6 over Android 4.4.4 KitKat out of the box, which many of you either really like or really dislike. I personally enjoy using MIUI over stock Android because of the extra functionality that it provides, but it does have a few minor flaws. The launcher is a major departure from what we've seen on other Android phones because it does not include an app drawer. Luckily, you can restore the more familiar experience with a third-party launcher such as Nova Launcher. The settings menu is also kind of cluttered because of Xiaomi's decision to place all of the app settings in the default system settings app. Instead of showing all the default Android settings on the single screen, they hid them under Additional Settings. This is kind of annoying when you want to go change something quickly or are looking for a specific item. There's also some problems with RAM consumption, which I'll discuss in just a minute. There's so many other features though that I really like which make me actually prefer MIUI over stock Android. I'm not going to go into detail here since I covered it extensively in my Redmi Note 4G review and Top 5 MIUI 6 Features videos. I'll leave a link to those videos in the description if you want to check them out. I'm sure a lot of you are wondering when the Redmi 2 will receive an Android 5.0 Lollipop update. Hugo Barra, Vice President of Xiaomi Global, stated the following in an interview with the Next Web. Upgrading to Lollipop is my number one priority from a product perspective for our global business. As you know, we customize Android significantly and have our own design language. So what we're tasked with now is not only all of the technical aspects of putting Android 5.0 on our devices, like at the kernel level, but we also have to marry Google's material design language with ours. We want the best of both worlds for our customers. That's in full swing at the moment, and you can expect MIUI 6 along with Android 5.0 on our Mi line of devices by the end of quarter 1, 2015. That update will come to our Redmi devices too, but we don't yet have an exact timeline just yet. It's tough to say exactly when we should expect an Android Lollipop update, but since the Redmi 2 is one of Xiaomi's latest devices, I would expect for the update to be ready for public release by early summer of this year. This is just speculation of course, but I'm confident that Xiaomi will want to get this update out as soon as possible in order to take advantage of the 64-bit processor. Speaking of the processor, we have a 64-bit quad-core Qualcomm Snapdragon 410 clocked at 1.2GHz powering the Xiaomi Redmi 2. Those are Cortex A53 cores coupled with an Adreno 306 GPU. Performance on this device was about average for the low end, but I feel that MIUI does a nice job with animations which makes the device seem faster. The device scored an unverified 20,078 in N22, which does seem a bit low, but you do have to consider the price of the device. Geekbench scores were 477 for single core and 1411 for multi core. Graphic intensive games like Asphalt 8 were close to unplayable on the Redmi 2, primarily due to slow load times and incredibly low frame rates. The Redmi 2 has 8GB of internal storage, which can be expanded up to 32GB via a microSD card. Keep in mind that MIUI does not allow apps to be moved to a microSD card, so you're going to be limited on how many apps you can have on your device. The microSD card expansion is a nice option for files like photos and videos, but keep in mind that's all it can be used for. As some of you already know, MIUI is known for having poor memory management. With only 1GB of RAM on the base model of the Redmi 2, this is deeply concerning for many users. Unfortunately, the device never had over 300MB available when all apps were closed and rarely could handle more than just a few open apps. I know this may sound a bit nitpicky, but this is a serious issue with the phone that made me adjust my usage. Say I want to listen to music, so I open the Pandora app. Okay, music playing. Now I get a text message asking me a question about something that could be answered by visiting a web page. Okay, let me open Google Chrome and navigate to a web page. The page loads and the Redmi 2 is out of RAM, so Pandora crashes and my music stops. I have to close Google Chrome, reply to the text message, and then relaunch Pandora to listen to a now different song. 
This is incredibly frustrating and honestly prevents me from using a device like this on a day-to-day -day basis. And knowing that this is a problem now, imagine how it's going to be in 3, 6, or even 12 months. Apps are getting more resource intensive and just can't work with less than 100 megabytes of RAM. The major problem here isn't that the device only has 1 gigabit of RAM, it's that MIUI poorly manages the amount of memory that it does have. I mean seriously Xiaomi, your operating system uses over 700 megabytes of memory on boot. You can't possibly expect the average user to cope with this on a device with only 1 gigabyte of RAM. They did announce on their official English form site that they would be launching a variant with 2 gigabytes of RAM and 16 gigabytes of storage soon, but that's not helpful for users who have already purchased the 1 gigabyte model, hoping to run more than a few apps at once. The solution here would be to improve memory management in MIUI, which is definitely possible, but I honestly don't see it happening anytime soon. In my experience, GPS on the Redmi 2 locked very quickly and was really accurate. This is nice because many low-end phones have slow GPS lock times and are often inaccurate. I wasn't able to get a cellular connection during the testing period, so I did end up using Nokia's Here Maps for offline navigation. The Redmi 2's 2200 mAh battery is enough to get through a full day of average use. Without an active connection to a cellular network, but with a constant Wi-Fi connection, the Redmi 2 provided enough power to get to about 11pm with heavy use. I would expect it to last until about 8pm with the cellular connection and heavy use, and about 10pm with the cellular connection and average use. You would think that the battery life wouldn't be very good due to its size, but that's just not the case. MIUI has excellent power management, which allows the device to last for a full day for many people. I did have 4 hours of screen on time the other day, but please keep in mind that that was without a cellular connection. If you purchase the Xiaomi Redmi 2 from Panduil, you will receive Xiaomi documentation, a Panduil quick start guide, a micro USB cable, and a USAC adapter. Overall, I think the Xiaomi Redmi 2 is a great device. Xiaomi continues to show us that they can deliver very high quality devices at low prices. The experience is compromised, sure, but at $140 you really can't complain about the lack of backlighting on the keys and poor gaming performance. It has an excellent design, great display, amazing software, good camera, and impressive battery life. If you do plan on buying it, I do strongly recommend waiting for the 2GB variant to become available as it will provide a much better software experience. Please be sure to check the links in the description for the Xiaomi Redmi 2 availability on Panduil. If you found this review helpful or informative, please make sure to hit that like button and also leave me a comment below letting me know your thoughts on the Redmi 2. That is going to be all for this video, thank you for watching and please be sure to subscribe.